I am Lieutenant General Scott Spellman, 55th Chief of Engineers and Commanding General of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. I'm coming to you today from Stony Point, New York, on the banks of the Hudson River. It was at this location in July of 1779 that one of the heroes of our regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Francois de Fleury, exhibited exceptional leadership under fire and was later recognized by the Continental Congress, who even had a medal struck in his honor. The De Fleury Medal was named in honor of Francois-Louis Tessier de Fleury, a French military engineer serving in the Continental Army. In 1777, De Fleury volunteered to serve with the American Army in our fight for independence from Great Britain. The Continental Congress appointed De Fleury a captain of engineers, and quickly proving himself at the battles of Fort Mifflin and Brandywine, he was promoted to lieutenant colonel. On June 1, 1779, the British captured Stony Point, New York on the western side of the Hudson River, in Verplanck's Point, directly across the river to the east. Possession of the two strategic forts brought a key part of the river under enemy control and also threatened the Americans' position at West Point, located less than 15 miles upriver. After reinforcing Stony Point, the British commander regarded it as a little Gibraltar. Recognizing the danger, General Washington planned a daring surprise assault. On the night of July 15, 16, he ordered a recently formed Light Infantry Corps, led by Brigadier General Mad Anthony Wayne, to attack Stony Point. The force consisted of four battalions. Colonel Christian Old Denmark Febiger led the 1st Battalion, with De Fleury as second in command. On July 15th, the Corps, except for a small diversionary force, unloaded weapons and turned in their ammunition. Secrecy was so tight the troops did not know they were going to attempt to recapture Stony Point. For such a risky assault, surprise was vital, and the attack was to take place in total darkness. Fixed bayonets and hand-to-hand -hand combat were the orders of the day. The Continentals launched a two-prong attack on the fortress. De Fleury led the assault up the rocky southern slope. First over the wall, De Fleury was followed by a wave of American bayonets. Rushing to the flagpole, De Fleury cut the British colors from their staff. Just after midnight, the 29-year-old De Fleury single-handedly struck the colors of the British 17th Regiment of Foot. By 2 a.m., General Wayne triumphantly wrote to Washington saying, the fort and garrison are ours. Our officers and men behave like men who are determined to be free. So it was that on October 1st, 1779, De Fleury stood before the Continental Congress to be praised for his valor at Stony Point. For his intrepid behavior, the Continental Congress ordered that a medal be struck in his honor. On the obverse of the medal is the Latin inscription translated as a memorial and reward for courage and boldness. On the reverse, again in Latin, fortifications, marshes, enemies overcome. Beneath the fort is the legend, Stony Point carried by storm, July 15, 1779. Today, the hallmarks of the Army Engineer Regiment stand on twin pillars, supporting combat operations and building vital infrastructure in the United States. The regiment currently consists of two elements, the 91,000 Army Engineer Soldiers serving in active duty, reserve, and National Guard troop units, and the 37,000 largely civilian members of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Under the leadership of the Chief of Engineers, this combined engineer team provides engineering expertise to the Army and responds to the nation's toughest challenges. In 1989, the Engineer Regiment adopted the DeFore Medal as a symbol to recognize today's engineer achievements because of the shared values demonstrated by the man for whom it was struck. The Engineer Regiment makes four award levels of the DeFore Medal, steel, bronze, silver, and gold. The gold medal, the United States Army Chief of Engineers is the only person authorized to award the gold medal each year to an individual whose contributions to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the Army Engineer Regiment exemplify boldness, courage, and commitment to a strong national defense. Starting in 2011, two gold medals are awarded annually, one to an individual outside the regiment 
and of national prominence, and one to an individual inside the regiment. The credit for today's DeFleury Award program goes to Lieutenant General retired Daniel R. Schroeder, who in 1989 was the commanding general of Fort Leonard Wood and the U.S. Army Engineer School Commandant. He wanted an award that would tie together the history of contributions of the Engineer Regiment, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and the birth of our great nation. Today, the U.S. Army Engineer Association is the arbiter of the DeFleury Medal Program. The first Gold DeFleury Medal recipient was Honorable John O. Marsh, Jr., the Secretary of the Army, in 1989. Because values have meaning to our engineer soldiers and those who support them, it is only appropriate that our nation's premier engineer award represent a soldier who served valiantly with the birth of our great country. And we saw those values on full display nearly 250 years ago, right here on the banks of the Hudson River in Lieutenant Colonel Francois de Fleury. Congratulations to all of you who are receiving this prestigious award named in his honor. Essayons, building strong, be all you can be.